another interesting episode of Inside Out, and today we have one of those topics, you know, it's lighthearted, but it's food for thought. The topic we have today is name change. Is it compulsory as a woman that I change my name after marriage? What does um, religion say on this issue? What do men say on this issue? If you look at the panel, you find out that there are quite a few men on the panel, and just one female, because it is the, they say it is the man that determines whether it is okay for his wife to drop her father's name, the name that she has carried until she met the man, and totally forget about it and adopt a new name. That's what we'll be talking about today. I think I have a panel that will do justice to this. If you look at it, you'll see that we have uh, uh, all aspects, I think, represented. Some of the people here I know very well. Pastor Adebola Adebanjo, he's a marriage counselor. Um, next to him is the only woman on the panel, Alhaja Hidaya Giwa. Am I correct? <laughs> Imam Sharifi Ibrahim. And. Um, Last and least, I don't know why they say last but not the least. Last and least, the only person after, there's nobody after him, is Mr. John Ikalia. You're welcome. Okay, I'm going I'm to take this from, let, let's start with religion, I think. And I'm going to be talking to um, Elijah last, because we want to hear what the men have to say on this issue before we talk to you at all. So let me start with you, Pastor. Um, what, what, what are your beliefs, and then what is the Christian belief? about this issue of name change? Is it, is it compulsory? Is it something you do if you want to? Is it some, I mean, what's, what's the, what's, what does religion say about it? And then your beliefs as well. Thank you. Uh, first of all, we need to understand what name is. Name is your identity. Yes. And then um, when you're identified by a name, you are given a name for, for sometimes for a purpose, you're given a name for an event, you're given a name to, for recognition. Now, that aside, what the Bible says is that a man, a woman, will leave their, their parents and cleave to their found law, to their, that is the man or the woman. Now, the moment you are being married out to a man, you are expected to drop your father's name for your husband's name. Now, the reason is this. You are, you are becoming one. You are not two persons with your husband. You are husband and wife as one person. So you cannot be bearing two names. No, no one person <laughs> bears two different names. So once you are one, your name becomes one. That is one of the bonds. That's one of the ways to identify, to yeah, show question. that truly. Question. Um, the man does not lose his name. So it's not like both of us come together and take half half of each other's name to no, form no, no, a no, new no. name. You are coming to take the man's name. Okay. According to the Bible, the man No, because I'm I'm taking it from what you said about yeah, the Bible. Yeah. No, no, no. They don't they don't have okay. there is no reason for that. Mm. It's clear. Once you come to marry the man, you drop your father's name and take on the Is that the man's what the name. Bible says? That's what the Bible says. Okay. Your name you must because you have become one. That's that's that impact, that that essence of one. That is why when you say the way you say it, and you say you have become one, I get the way it seems like to me is like both of you should have a new identity. Yeah. That's the way you're coming across. But the man doesn't get a new identity. So what if I'm to take it with the way you're coming across, I would say it is only the woman that becomes one, not the man. No, no. You, 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 your first question is from the Bible aspect. Yes. Now, the Bible says you have cleaved, you have become one. Yes. That is, it's, it's a mathematics of God. Yes. It has God, God's arithmetic. Yes. And now the man is the dominant factor here. You understand? Now, you, the woman, you have come to be an helper. The Bible says Adam found a helpmeet. You are the helper. You have come as an addition to the man. So the man's name is the dominant factor. You don't have... It's not a questionable thing to begin to say, let's imbibe names or let's do half of my name 
half of your name. The man's identity is the, is the one that is recognized according to Bible terms. So, and that identity is the one that is subject to God, that God sees as the head. That's why he calls the man the head of the house. Now, if the head, then every other thing comes under the head. The head must be identified. That is why you see them identified, called, or recognized as that name, because you have come to meet the head. You have been joined to the man to fulfill your own purpose. So you, don't, you can't bring a part of your name, because whether you like it or not, one day, you two, you're going to, if you have a female child, you're going to give your female child out. So I'll make, there will be confusion along the line if everybody has to bring half, half of their names. And God is a God of order. So that is why once you are leaving your father's house, bear your name. The people you leave, if you have a brother, that, your brother will marry another woman. That woman too will come into your own house and bear your so name. So what happens in a situation where a man has all girls? And he's afraid that um, his name may be lost in yeah. the scheme of things. I mean, yeah. <laughs> where, what, hap what happens? Does that mean he didn't... He's, he's he just going to die and nobody's going to remember, remember his name. Remember him. So the girl child doesn't count. No, no, no. Now it, it, now becomes, it now becomes a thing of a... That is where the understanding comes now. Names are given to identify. If, the father, if they are all girls and there's an understanding between the husbands to say, let us recognize this man. Let us just honor him. Instead of his name fading out, the, 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 lady, the, the women could just come... Are you and, saying that you can bend the rules of, the, of, the, of, of Christianity? No, no, no. You, can, it's, it's, it, you cannot bend, but you can, there can be an understanding. God is not a rigid God like that. Let me talk to you, Mr. Ikaria. What's your view on this? Well, my view on, on Personally, this Personally, traditionally? Traditionally, if you look at it from the angle, man is the head of the family. And uh, the issue of saying a woman sharing the name with the man, probably because he has all girls. I'll ask a slight question here. Can that name become the sole name of the children too? Can that be translated to the next generation and other generations to come? I think if you look at it from that angle, it may not be possible. So Why I think, can it not be possible? Um, you know, in African contests, we have culture. I'm from Edo State, okay? Um, in our place, we bear the name of our parents. Okay, now bearing that name means that it goes straight to the next generation, next generation, because it becomes a genealogy that you can see. That even anybody coming, if you look at, if you go to some places, let's say overseas, you can actually just go and see family trees. You can say, okay, from 15th century, this is the line, the lineage coming. How would you trace that? Where a lady comes to be a part of her family name. She's married, she's married. She drops her family's name because she's now one with the husband. They are now one family. Why do you keep saying one? If you are one, you yes. don't drop your name. Now, I can't drop my name. Yes. I can't drop it because I'm the head of the family, okay. the man is the head of the family. First of all, I will say I'm African, and also I'm a Nigerian. We have our culture. We have rich heritage. But it doesn't mean some instances, depending on people's diverse view and ideology. Is there anything that, you're, that can make you allow your wife take or answer her maiden name along with yours? Is okay. there any consideration? Consideration for that would be probably during course of courtship, you have understanding to say, okay, probably if she's a celebrity, for example, maybe a celebrity who wants to have um, that brand name there, you can consider that. You can talk like about it. Like a Jockey Silver. Yes. Okay. You can talk about that and you, have, you strike a balance before you go into marriage. So it doesn't complex things or complicate things at the end of the day for both parties okay. when they are married. Hey, Imam, I mean, I had to take the two men first and then I can talk, I can talk to you. Very good. I'd like to hear your point of view and then from the point of view of Islam, what 
um, what does Islam have to say? What is your point of view on Islam? Yeah, thank you for having me. I think I personally don't have um, an, an opinion outside the opinion of Islam. And I think my view or the way Islam views it is, um, number one, it is enshrined the Quran. Number two, it is enshrined in, the, in um, what is called the Sunnah. And what is the position of Islam? The position of Islam is basically um, given liberty to the woman. The liberty in this sense is uh, retaining a maiden name. That's the position of Islam. That it, it is stated. Exactly stated. It is a woman is called to preserve her genealogy, to preserve the family lineage. She is given that liberty to retain her name. That's the position of Islam. And um, Um, that is He's why looking at you very strangely. Yeah, Mr. Kalia is looking yes, at you very yes. strangely. Yeah, Learning. exactly. Yeah. Uh, basically, it is well entrenched in um, Quran 33, verse um, 4. In the whole Quran, Surah Al Ahzab, verse 4 5, Allah clearly stated that you should call people by their name and their, the name of their fathers. It is clearly stated be it a woman, be it a man, even when you adopt children you add the name of their fathers. So that's the position of Islam in preserving lineage and genealogy. That's the position of Islam. Secondly, giving liberty to the woman. Because marriage in Islam is seen as a symbiotic relationship where you both contribute, both you both partner. Despite the fact that the man is made the head, the, the, the person in charge to direct the affairs of the home. But it is viewed that the woman is coming with a supportive role. And when she's coming with this, that supportive role, she's not denied her name. She's not denied the link to her father or the link to the family. So that is the position of Islam. And history has several facets of that to buttress what I've said. Hmm. Let, me, let me ask you this. Based on, I mean, he's talked from a cultural point of view, and they're looking at you very amazed at what you just said. It could be that means. It could be that I, I, I would ask a question. Don't yeah. you feel, should I use the word threatened? Okay. That your wife would be perceived as not being linked to you, or she would not, you know, when they say you, the two of you have become one. Okay. When after marriage. Where, does, where is that oneness if you don't even share the name? Okay. Yes. Um, basically, the, the ruling factor here is the sovereignty of the ideology that we stick to in Islam. The ideology gener I mean, originates from Allah, the supreme being, and he gives the laws. He gives the, and in a manner that fits human affairs. So for that reason, when man and woman are married, the... The, this, the two of them, as I've said earlier, are partners. So the question regarding that um, pride for the man, that um, eulogy, that, I mean, the, 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 the air he has Doesn't it remove, like, your headship? No, like no, 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 no. It doesn't remove. That's where I'm going. That pride that a man deserves that, okay, it's my wife. I think other than that, there is no challenge, I mean, to your wife. Even when she's not addressed by your name, say, Mr. I mean, Mrs. So so and so to your name, there is no challenge other than that. I mean, there that could be a threat to you, feeling that maybe when your wife your wife is not attached to you, then it's a threat. Maybe some other person is taking it from you. No, rather, but because of the overriding ideology, as I've said earlier, that we believe or the understanding or the faith that God owns the sovereignty. He holds the supremacy and um, the leadership that it has been given the man. It is not only in name. In Yoruba language, it says that um, um, when you, Idobale Koni, Idobale Koni Owo, Idobale Kola Kmele, you understand that. So when, it is not when you lie down that it you It is not when respect. you prostrate that shows that you really have respect. It is not in the name. When the name is attached to you, and that means your wife will give you the hundred percent respect you regard, you, you deserve, or the whatever understanding that you deserve from her. It is when you come down to understand that this relationship is blessed by God. Number two, this relationship has 
project has responsibilities that must be handled by both. Then with that understanding, understanding that we are in a partnership together. Being in a partnership together means that I have to contribute. She has to contribute to allow for the success of the boat of the family while it is sailing on the sea. So in that respect, when I'm not addressed by, it is recognizing our position, recognizing the right of that woman. That's the way Islam views it. Not usurping the woman or taking the whole of her and um, dragging her to ourselves. That is not a thing that confirms our submission. It's a thing that confirms the supremacy itself for the man. So it is in the relationship at the end of the day after marriage that will really determine whether it's truly coming as a successful marriage or otherwise. Alaja Idaya, let me, let me talk to you, Kiwa. You, 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 you answer your maiden name. Why is that? Because um, my religion entails that I should bear my, uh, my, name, my father's name. I don't bear my husband's name. You don't add your husband's name at all? I don't. In everything? Even, even everywhere I go. My friends, anywhere I go, they call me by my father's name. Exactly that people know me. So what's the essence of, of getting married? I'm just wondering, how do they, how do they know who your husband is? People that know that I was married know that I'm married to so-so person. But it doesn't erase my father's name. If people recognize me more with my father's name. And you're fine with that? Yes. How? Yes. how you know, he asked a, a, an important question. What do your children bear? They bear their father's name. So how do you link yourself with your children? My children knows me by my father's name. They even call me by my father's name. Really? Yes. How does that work? <laughs> Not even a compound name, like your name, your father's name, and your husband's name. Because they've been educated about Islam and yeah, yeah, I'm saying for you as a woman, don't you miss? I mean, your name, your name hasn't changed, but you're married. I mean, it, normally a woman takes it as a thing of pride to write Mrs. Lagbaja somebody. I'm saying that from what you're saying, that never happened. Well, it has never happened to me because even while I was in school, while I was in uni like that, after our wedding, after marriage, I still continue with my education. So, hardly people will be asking Mrs. Giwa, Mrs. Giwa. I'll tell them I'm Mrs. Giwa. So, one day somebody now told me. Do you me, say Mrs. Mrs. your maiden name? No, Mrs. Giwa, but that is my father's name. So, I will then allow. But you can't be Mrs. Giwa now. You're not married to your father now. I'm not married <laughs> to my father, but Mrs. I guess Mrs. Giwa, even though people does not know it wasn't my It's not my maiden name. So they still call me by that name, and I'm happy with it. Let me, let me, let me, let me, Imam, let me ask you this question. Okay. And let me reveal now that both of them are husband and wife. <laughs> I am just tripping on the fact that both of you can sit down and be individual and independent. And if I hadn't said what I said now, she, she's seen as an individual on her own, and he's seen as an individual on his own, which is a good thing, you know, that the woman doesn't totally lose her identity on herself. But I, I still ask the question, how can she be called Mrs. Giwa? Well, um, it's straightforward. She's called um, Mrs. Hidayat Giwa. Maybe that's what you're asking. Yes. Her name is Hidayat. Yes, I know Giwa that's her is, first name, Hidayat. Giwa is a surname. Yes. Exactly, the father's name. Yes, but ordinarily, you know, even when you are bearing your husband's name, you are Mrs. Um, you know, Comfort Awujobi, for instance. I mean, that's the husband's name. People will just call you Mrs. Awujobi, you understand? Forgetting your, I mean, the comfort side of it. It is a normal thing in our environment. But basically, regarding Islam, maybe you are talking, I think the angle you are trying to, I mean, bring forth is the angle of the, the pride that... Okay, you see it as 
as pride. Personally, I, I don't, I mean, there are different things that call your attention to pride, really, in different things. What could be a source of pride to one person might not be a source of pride to another person. Mm. I think that's another thing in this issue. I mean, being addressed as Mrs. For instance, my son is Ibrahim, as Mrs. Ibrahim, to me is not a source of pride to me. You understand? It's basically based on the ideology, understanding, and the, the, the teachings that we have. And I understand is some of the I mean, freedom, liberty a woman deserves that she has to be given, and nothing should you solve that from her. That's the precise. I, I want to ask you something, um, um, uh, Mr. Kalia. Yes. I wanted, you know, first of all, I didn't want to tell I, anybody. Sorry, yes. I, I even asked mm. a question. I have a question for Mr. Ikalia. Yes. I think he was talking about from the traditional angle, from yes. the African yes. um, mm. point of view. Yes. Yeah. I want to be educated. I mean, regarding from what we learned, I think it was at the point we have this um, influx of the Western understanding or education that we started having the issue of um, maybe the surname attached to our name or things like that. From the African background, I think women, are, I, I, I stand to be corrected, I don't think we are attached to the name of our husband from the African sense of it. Apart, I mean, re removing the Western influence, what is the position of Africanism based on that? Okay. For me, I think growing up, what I got to know is that you see a family, husband and wife, either you address, you know your mom for two things. The name of probably the firstborn, probably papa, mama, born boy. Yes. yes. Or papa, born boy. Yes. Mm. Then after that, you grew up knowing that they are Mr. and Mrs. We grew up knowing that. Okay? We also grew up knowing that when people get married, they change their names. They do name change. Now, the essence of that is supposed to be an identity, brand identity. Whether your father is rich, you are coming from a rich home, it doesn't matter. It's a form of humility to say for you that, okay, I'm married to this man. There used to be a song called, if you marry a taxi driver, I don't care. <laughs> now, if your husband is poor and you are a wealthy woman, for example, or rich, you will not say, okay, uh, you want to accept the man in total. I want to be Mr. What and if Mrs. I have this. worked? But I'm not a celebrity. On, I'm sorry. If yeah. On one hand, probably like I said in the beginning, why cutting? She believes and he believes that, look, on mutual understanding, less, I want to keep part of my family name. Then if they have that understanding, it's okay. It's a flexible, it's a flexible thing. It's not supposed to be cast on stones like that. But both parties must respect each other when it comes to issues like that. Like you said, it's an agreement. Yeah. But my automatic assumption when I say that to you is not to ask for permission, but it is out of respect for your person and the fact that you are my husband. I am not expecting you to say no. Okay. Thank you, Agatha. Let, let, me, let me come from this angle now. Yes. Somebody said, if you don't understand, if you don't know the use of something, abuse is inevitable. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't understand the essence of marriage. And that is why all of these arguments, all of these problems, all of these counter arguments come about, can I use my name? Can I not use my name? Marriage is an institution of God. It's God's institution, not man's idea. It is God's. And it is the only institution where you are given a certificate ahead. Other institutions you then finish. Then you learn the ropes while you are in it. You, <laughs> or you, go, to, you, you, you go to Unilag. After four years, they give you a certificate. But in marriage, yeah. you are given the, the certificate from day one. That means it is assumed that you must not fail. Let me, now, let me also now, ask let me, you. Let me, let me, let me yes. finish here. Now. If you I'm say, to you, Mr. If you say that um, because submission and love, the man has a, 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 the man has a, a, a duty to also love, even as a woman will submit, 
that institution has rules. And those rules must be followed. Let me For ask you what part of the Bible, the way you have asked him, what portion of the Bible specifically says that you must drop your name? I know about the leave and cleave. What portion says you must drop your name? In Genesis 2, mm. 28, mm -hmm. it says a man, mm. will, a man and a woman will leave his father and his mother mm. and cleave. That's not name. Wait, wait, wait. When you say cleave, cleave on the, on, defines all. According Whether, to whose definition? According to the Bible, the yes. man that, that's dealing, talking to us <laughs> on culture and uh, heritage okay, Uncle, should tell us why, why that is. Why that is, is not it, biblical. Why is the girl him. child not appreciated? Why don't you think okay. that the girl child can keep her name? Um, on, that, on that issue, yes. I think for a girl child, if you have all girls, they bear your name, okay? Like I said initially, they bear your name. But you give them out in marriage. Now, giving them out in marriage, you've not lost your child. It you just know? means you've lost your name based on what no, you're saying. No. It means your lineage goes because you didn't have no, a boy. Look at it. You've not lost. And we have President Clinton, one daughter. Yes. You've not lost your child. Your child is still your child. Yeah. The only difference is that the child has been given out in marriage. But like I said, in that marriage, if you have a mutual If you married a Ghanaian woman, okay. for instance, okay. where they also keep their names and they want their children to keep their names, what happens? Okay, now, that's where understanding comes in. You cut the she, person. That's Africa as well. That's African. You've mm. cut the person. Every culture differs. Every culture Have you ever heard this thing that they do in yes. some villages in Africa? In Nigeria, not Africa. Yes. Especially on, a, on my side of town, Delta, okay. Edo. Edo yes. where, when a person has all girls, he, they let the first girl, she doesn't get married. No, 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 that's not true. No. What happened is that they will take one of the girls. She's not going to be married. She'll be, she'll be home. <laughs> she'll have a pair. Give she birth will, to children. She will have an affair. Yes, and then give birth to children, and then that should be, children will be named after the father. Yes, she, she that, sacrificed they do that. to continue the lineage of the man. This is traditional. It is tra they know that that is going to be the okay, fate of that child. On, like on this issue, okay, we'll talk about names. It changes nothing. You, you may have all female children, okay, yet. Some will become pilots, medical doctors, and even president. I think the president prime minister of Britain is a woman. Mm. Okay? It doesn't change anything. But kidding. on the issue of the marriage, eh, it has to do with the man who is getting married to that woman to understand that, okay, this woman who is not the... Let's assume the woman is not married. is a prime minister, for example, or a head of state. And he's dating a man. Why are you, why um, are you calling people who are way up there? No, what no, no, if no, I am I'm, a nobody? To, no. But to myself, okay. I am a somebody. Okay, let's say for you, you are a somebody. Like I you am said. Hidaya. No. No, I want to use I'm not this. a prime minister. Let's use this as a good example now, like yes. what you said. Somebody married very late, let's say at 40. She has built a career, built a name in terms of, let's say, her job. She has grown to become a manager or whatever where she walks, and now is getting married. And the man says, look, you have to drop my name. Naturally, it is it's something that is supposed to be done. It's like what we grow up to meet, a norm, that when a woman gets married to a man, you know they are going to sign a certificate in the church, and it's handed over to them. And I think that certificate bears Name. The name. Yes. So that name there, I think it should be based on mutual understanding. But if it's not there, it should bear the name of the man because the man is the head of his family. <laughs> that, yeah. I, I, need, I need you to understand the point I'm coming from. Yes. It takes maturity. Is it the name that makes the man the head of the home? No, it's part of it. 
it's part of it because you, you know you are going to see it as you go for an event, you go for an occasion, and they want to address you. And they are going to address, let's say, Mr. and Mrs. XYZ. That's their name. You want to address the woman as Mrs. Y and the man as Mrs. It looks kind of it looks untidy. It looks untidy. Mm. And it should be kind of uh, seamless. Mr. and Mrs. This. It's fine. It makes it fine. Because God is a God of order. Yeah. Okay. He orders things. I think um, I should add this as well. Um, marriage, um, the way, in my view, the way Islam um, has catered for this issue is planting the tree of parenthood. What the man is, as we are discussing here, trying to long for, the pride of being the headship, is being catered for in the tree of parenthood. Because when the, your child or your daughter retains your family name or your name, and he or she goes, I mean, she goes into marriage, and she retains your name. In the same way, your own name has been retained in that order. Her name as well, when she's married with another husband, with a, with a man as a husband, the name of that family will be retained when they give birth as well. So that lineage continues in that order because of the parenthood order. And you talked about God's order, the, the, the issue of order. In that, in that way, God has created an order in that let way. Me, let me ask you Social this. Is it, is it okay to retain your maiden name along with your husband's name? Traditionally, anything that is tried and true, traditionally, has a positive purpose. You've seen things that have been there over 100 years, 200 years, and then you want to come and change it in a day because you've seen it somewhere else? No, that's not true. So when you are married, where we come from, I'm talking about Nigeria basically, you must drop your father's name and bear your husband's son. That is traditional. It's been there, tried and true. Okay? Let us look at it from the angle of religion. I'm a Christian. Explicitly, there is no, you cannot say the verse in Genesis tells you change your name. Explicitly. It's not very explicit. But it says they will leave their parents and they will cleave and become one. But if you go down the New Testament, it talks about the headship of a man, which it compares with the headship of Jesus over the church. You understand me? As a Christian, you are whatsoever you are in Christ. And if Christ is the head, and the marriage institution what, is what that, what that, Sorry, okay. I, I just need to hold you there. What it means is that all of us, our surname should be Christ. I'm, it's, it, it's a pattern. It's a pattern. Based on what you have no, no, done, no, no, no. Let, let me finish. Uh, no, no, yes. yes. When you say analogy, said, when you I'm say from what he said, no, no, let me. Let me, me no, 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 no. You are not. You are not getting me right. If I set a principle, if I set a pattern, a pattern is a principle I have set to be followed. You understand? It does not. If I set up a principle here, it does not mean that the name that is used in that principle must be the name that you follow. But the pattern and the way it is done yeah. is the way you will follow. Yeah. So which pattern and... Now, I, so yeah, what I'm saying is that like Jesus, the yeah, Bible made it... We, I'm coming. The Bible Christians. made it very clear. You are called Christians. So you're also known by that name. Christian means Christ-like. Yes, Christ-like. Uh, that's so right. it's an identity. Exactly. Is there followers of Christ? Yes. yes. Well, and he, Christ, that is what he's identity. saying is that yes. your, that is part of your identity. Identity. That you Come. So yes, Christ-like. Yeah, so, so you are a Christian. But it hasn't. You haven't yes. changed your name to be identified as a Christian, have you? No, but your person. Your lifestyle. Your lifestyle. Who you are. Yes. What you portray. What shows you as a Christian. Absolutely. Meaning. Yeah. This woman can sit here and do everything that a married woman could do, and yes. you may not know who her husband is, but you will identify that she's a married woman. That's what it tells you. I think, I think you're getting from my own angle. Okay, okay I, you know, yeah, because I was trying to hear your angle. Okay, okay, so can you go to now, the point? So. Yes, the point is very clear. The Bible says it's a marriage relationship mm. between husband 
and wife. Mm. It's like the relationship between Christ and, and church. church. Mm. That's what the Bible is saying. It did not say, change your name to Christ. He said the kind of relationship Jesus has with the church is the kind of relationship that husband should have with a wife. And that <laughs> comes to worship. And that's where you were quoting love mm. and submission. Mm. You were comparing, which is the same pattern you use. You were comparing um, the way Jesus loved the church, the church as the head of the church. Why yes. it seems that supposed to be kind of in order. Yes. I walk into an embassy with my wife. Yes. To process a visa. Yes. Okay. We are applying for a visa. Yes. Okay. I come in as Mr. Ikalia. She comes in as Mrs. Lagbaja. And I will say, we are husband and wife. You know, there's going to be a lot of complication. There's going to be a lot of technicalities. Before you clear the air, probably you would have been declined visa probably first time. I think I think I have, I have an answer to okay, that. Please. It is because, because of the background. Okay. The embassy you have gone into is using the Christian based principles. So even that's that's why I challenge the Africanism you talked about earlier. That what we have in Africa, I'm not aware. I lived with my parents even from young age. The issue of using surname, adding the name of your husband to the, your, the name of the, the new wife. I think it's not part of the tradition I know in Nigeria. I want any, any, any tribe in Nigeria to come up with this understanding. There is no written law in the traditional books that tells you that you come up with the name of the, the husband. Okay, let's but look at it, it from is, this angle. Wait, 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 okay, wait sorry, please. Yes. It is just a thing of social acceptance. It's a thing we grow up to know. And we accept it in that when order. When you say something wait, you please, grow up wait, to know, wait, wait. it is add a it. tradition. Yes, let me add something it. Something that is a norm becomes okay. a what? A okay. tradition and is right, a religion it is that gives, gave birth to a tradition. That it is, is because, because tradition. it is because, I, mean, I said, when you look at things, why you are going to see look at the age that of colonialism your great grandfather, they call him Papa Bimbo, Mama this, this and that. The next generation comes up, I see that. The next one coming up, my children is seeing uh, daddy and mommy being called uh, Mr. and Mrs. You know, over time it becomes, a norm becomes a tradition over when you time. Travel, when you travel to an Arab country, for instance, right. it yeah. will not be a surprise thing. When you come in as Mr. Ikalia, for yes. instance, and your wife comes in and said, um, Mrs. You know, Ambrose, for instance, it will not be a, 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 I mean, a strange thing. They will basically understand what they will ask, ask from you. Are you married? You feel the form married to who and you describe. It is not an issue. It is the social acceptance. It is the culture and the path you follow that determines it. And secondly, it is even, as I've said earlier, it is the bad right of the woman. It is one of the ways of respecting the families of, the wi of, of your wife, retaining the, that lineage. And that's the way Islam sees it. It sees it as, as a way of... Um, um, given that, that pride that we have talked about to the wife and even to the family. Because when you take the wife, you go with the wife, you left the, with the, the, the family with nothing. They, didn't, they won't follow you to where you have gone. But one of the things that will be linking is that sustainability of that name to that family and it gives the family honor. Name change. This has been really exciting. I mean, I'm learning. Like I'm sure a lot of us are as we as we watch this. So yeah, um, Imam, you wanted to say something. Yes, I have about um, three responses. Yeah. The first one regarding the research um, Pastor talked about. I think the basis for those um, research are different from what we are discussing. Number one, he's talking about um, broken homes, and there are different reasons for broken homes. It doesn't mean that um, it was the reason for that broken home was because the woman failed to answer the name of the husband. There are several reasons for having broken homes. So that might not hold water in regarding that. Number two, regarding um, identity, names. Islam respects name so much. So much that it has attached that to your success in life. The name you bear is one of the things that add to your success in life. That is the so name. So both of you are agreeing on that. Yes, yes exactly. exactly. The name you bear is one of the things that attach to your success because or the add to your success. Because the pastor said the same thing. He said the same thing. So to clarify the air that 
I mean, disagreeing on the issue of taking up the husband name is not to say that Islam desecrates res taking up good names. Your name, my name, should be good names. That's the way Islam sees it. And it had to add up to be one of the names that will be called on the Day of Judgment, as Allah SWT has said it. Number three, regarding, um, we are talking about um, justice now. We talk about um, oppressing women now. The issue of um, having more than one wife, as the um, pastor mentioned it, from the way Islam sees it, is ask, I mean, answering the human question. Islam sees permissibility for men to have more than one wife as answering the human question. Which is? Which is the, the need for every man that is seated here, that are here, the need that, okay, you want to have another wife, you need, and that's one why of the reasons. Why is that a need? Uh, thank you very much. And that's one of the reasons why we have more and more increasing rate of promiscuity among people that are, I mean, cleaved together as husband and wife, and they still go out to do a lot of things where the wives are not aware, <laughs> but creating... That applies to both. Even, so even, even, it, even it, the wait, 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 even those who have four, yes. four wives, yeah. Yes, yes. So but, I need oh, I also need the research now exactly. from you. I need the I need the, uh, the you, for, you need for, to give us to, figures to cater for the the person involved now, where you follow the principles that have been laid down, and being I mean truthful to yourself, honest and sincere to the rule that you attach to. That's the God the God's commandment. Then obviously that even when you have one wife, even when you have more than one, there is no need for you to go into promiscuity. It is because if you can't control yourself for one, you will not control yourself after four. It I don't is see how it is. It is. It is to balance for the difference in what human part nature. One? It is to balance for the difference in human nature because number one, when you have me as a person, when I stay under the sun, for instance, I might not be able to stay under the sun as another person. It has more capability than me. Another person could have more capability than me when you have the code here now, under code. So in the same way, in responding to that human nature question, we have different ability to hold and be disciplined or controlled. So that's why Islam has given room for... Okay, Islam has room, given you room that if you like another exactly, one, take you it, are just bring the person in. No, no, no. Take it this other. It is expected that if you are in need, you want more than one wife, then go through the process of solemnization and get married appropriately. Not, not doing it around the corner or from the back door. Make it a legislated and authorized thing where it is solemnized divinely as well. That's the position Islam sees it. You're not going far. I'm one of those people that changed the name. Uh -huh. okay. My name used to be Ola Ogun before. So I changed it, that was last two years, to Ola Lua. Confirm, you can testify wow. to that. Okay. <laughs> If name, oh, number one, if name is that not is... important, God himself will not personally change Jacob's name. Number two, okay, the problem with every family is this. People choose to move away from their place. Everybody has a place. The place of a man is to be the head. The place of the woman is to be the supporter, the helper. That is how it is from the beginning. If I'm wrong, you can have a person sitting beside you. The third one is this. Let me go to the traditional aspect. Okay. The traditional aspect will say this. It says, Shongo Okoya. If the name of Shongo as the head is not important, Shongo will not come first. Okay. Let's take it this way. I am Shongo now. Shongo name is Olaolua. Oya name is Shadiat. Automatically, if you want to call it, if you want to call, if you want to refer to the woman, if you want to talk, talk about the, if you want to call the woman name now, you will say Olaoluwa Shadiat. So automatically, tradition accepted that you have to call, the, you have to bear the name of your what? Of your husband. Let me go to the Christian aspect now. The man is your what? Is your covering. The man is what God sees. It says one shall chase what? One thousand. Two chashes, how many? 10,000. 10, Automatically, if the two of you are chasing, and the Bible says the two shall become what? One. Now God is not seeing two. It is seeing one. And he's seeing the head to name anything. Thank you so much. In New Testament as well, 
when you look at the genealogy of Jesus, the Bible stated it that Jesus from Abraham, Abraham, Isaac, from Isaac, Jacob, from Jacob down. Joseph. The woman's name, the us, I mean, those wife, mother, everyone, they are not mentioned. And my problem with changing them, especially for the ladies, uh, if you look at it, for example, if you now decided that, okay, let me bear the man's name as a tradition or whatever or religion it says. At the end of the day, right now, the institution of the marriage, it is not what it is. For example, divorce, rampant, or a woman who decided that, okay, I want to be on my own. Does that mean that you have to start going back the whole process again and change your father to your father's name? Then when you get the second man, you now start changing name again. So you're saying in case of divorce, just keep yes. one name. You keep your own name. This is the man that I guess brought you all. I guess even if this one abandoned you or something like that, you decided to leave the man. You are now going back with the second person. You have to even go another process that. So you are saying that the woman should keep her maiden name yes. and retain her identity. Yes, if you do so that, 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 let me answer that. So, excuse me, let me answer him. If you do that, that means you already, you, you didn't That is, you are getting married planning on the divorce. In. No, you no. already had that premeditated plan. No. I don't no, think no. that is a good one. Uh, actually, actually, you could use that for, for research purpose to build our research base. So, Probably, I think it's a relevant uh, point. In 1340, historically, we found that women change their name because their names are nameless. And also, in, in search of 1994, we find 94 percent change their names. Why also we can see that when people change their names, when they are writing, even when someone is give up the ghost, they say nay, take him back to their middle name because it can be endowed that a man and a woman moving, changing from one particular generation to another. Thank you. One of those that has um, changed her name from um, my own father's name to Mr. Okon's name. And it gives me. Why are you clapping for that <laughs> now? Uh, it gives me so much joy to answer this man's name. That oneness, it really just cannot take it away from me. Anytime I think of it, I am. In fact, I don't even want to remember the other name. Really? From the, yes, from the day I left. I dropped that name. My grandfather, my, I met my grandparents and I saw that my grandmother was answering the husband's name, my mom, and all that. So I've come to accept it, imbibe it, I practice it, and I teach it to my children that this is how it's supposed to be. Now, because I answer that name, I don't know, we are just so connected. And because I've agreed, and I've agreed to work with that name as a Mrs. Okun. I think anywhere he is, somehow, maybe telepathy. But I guess you, know you know, again, yeah. there's never enough time. But I think we have a bit of an idea. There's no way we can address all the issues in one day. What I'm going to ask is that we give last lines, words that we want um, to take away from this conversation. And I'm going to start with the only female here, Alaja. Something that you want us to take away. I would say religion has not really entrapped women. Our religion has come to emancipate women, as we have read, we have read from the book. So in that line, we can bear our name. Since from the Islamic religion, you are not, you are not, I mean, uh, enshrined to bear your husband's name. It's not a compulsory something, so you can still bear your, your son's name and take it to any level, and it has nothing, it has nothing to change in your life. Pastor. Well, from this discussion, I have learned new things, and then I also want us to take this fact away that God is the owner of this institution called marriage, and then if he has said we should follow the precepts, let's follow the precepts and see whether it benefits us on the long run or not. Now, name is your identity, as we all know. And then um, whether we see it as religion or God's command, once he says submit to your husband, except 
in dire needs that you need to now use it for other commercial purposes or once you have submitted first, then let the, agree, the other things be agreed upon. If it's agreed upon, then it will still be beneficial. It shouldn't be something <laughs> that should be a struggle. Imam? Yes. Um, Neil, uh, from my understanding, should be seen as a symbolic um, label that radiates in the life of every individual, pushing him or her to success. Secondly, um, bearing the being attached to one's maiden name is not any sense of slavery and it in, in no way is in no way jeopardizing love in marriage, in no way jeopardizing oneness or unity in marriage. It is at the end of the day given liberty, given freedom to women, which is one of the freedom that is divinely given to women as Islam has enshrined it. Thank you. Mr. I think um, regarding name, um, women should not be scared to let go of their maiden name, to bear their husband's name. It's, you should see it as a thing of pride, that you are coming to a family and to come up with the next generation. And apart from that, we should also learn to preserve our family trees. As we get older, we tell our stories about past generations to our children, probably it could be diagrammatic, let's imbibe that culture, so that for generations to come, they can see that. I leave you. Let me thank my panelists for doing a fantastic job on this issue. Um, I thank the audience as well. And a word to take away is that, again, it's nothing is cast in stone. It is also based on your understanding of each other. And it is something that I think both parties, once they agree, as somebody said here, except the two agree, you know? So it is something that, I mean, both of you want to go into a relationship for the rest of your lives. So it is something you talk about during courtship. And if it is not an issue for both of you, go on. If it's going to be an issue, then you know you stop it before it goes any further. And the issue of the family tree, I think that's a wonderful thing. That's not something we do a lot of here. And um, a very big thank you to you. If you have comments or suggestions, you send us an email to um, insideoutwithagatha at yahoo.com or our Facebook page, which is www.facebook.com forward slash insideoutwithagatha or follow us on Twitter at Inside Out Media. I'd like to thank Voltic Water, um, KGM Industries Limited, and to thank Luches Beauty and Essentials for my makeup. Until next week, when we come your way again, talking about something else equally as interesting and educating. Bye-bye. See you next week.